So it has been close to a decade since Jake Paul started gaining popularity online, alongside his brother Logan. And no matter how you feel about this guy, whether you are his biggest hater or biggest fan, you have to at the very least acknowledge the longevity of his career. Because in this internet space, you have people come and go every single year, every single month, every single week. It is insanely hard to stay relevant online because there are constantly newer, younger personalities emerging hungry and gunning for your spot. And on top of that, the trends are always shifting, and what might be the most popular content style online, along with the algorithm, is always being altered. For Jake, it all really started when he was posting videos on a platform called Vine, which was basically the original TikTok. Snow. I like snow. This is where he and Logan discovered they had a knack for going viral, and from here they would never really look back. Soon Jake would find himself starring in a Disney Channel show, along with Olivia Rodrigo, called Bizarre Vark. Hey yo, I'm Jake Paul from Bizarre Vark, and you're watching Disney Channel. Oh, no looker, first ever. Oh, nailed it. And to be honest, their acting was already pretty on par with what you would expect out of most children's television programs. Dirk and Kirk, <laughs> you have a sister named Smirk. Who do you work for? Sorry, Kirk, but thanks to Paige, I'm not doing dangerous stairs anymore. Only safe ones. What have you done to dare me, bro? Being on this show would give Jake yeah another boost in popularity, but it would also put him in this box where his audience was essentially all children, with most young adults not taking him or his outlandish content seriously at all. He and his brother knew this, but they didn't care because they were making fat stacks of cash, so they played right into the character. Oh, Logan, if you go in, I'll give you your money back. It's literally disgusting. Hurry up, Logan. The cops are coming. I think that's what he's saying. It's really nasty in there. My brother is savage. Everything Jake did was the definition of hyperbole and downright overreaction. In short, he was loud, disrespectful, and annoying to anyone over the age of 12 years old. And also they have these free segways here. Is that how that works? Yeah, you can just, just, you can just drive it. Are you calling the police? Yeah. My name is Jeff. Run! Now from here, Jake's ego would swell like an overinflated balloon destined to pop. He became rich and famous, and quickly he would rise to become one of the most popular, yet polarizing figures on YouTube. If you're new here, I want to make sure you guys are smiling. I want to make sure you're working hard. I want to make sure you're dabbing on them haters. And uh, the Jake Paul has hit 10 milli. But I remember one day I was like, um, I'm going to vlog and, and be the best vlogger there is. And then the next day, I got a camera and started vlogging. And then 324 days later, I broke a record. And at this time, he was also involved in several shady business ventures he was promoting to his audience. So uh, basically, there's this thing on the internet called mystery boxes. You buy them, you don't know what's gonna be in them. They come to your house, you open it up and it's a mystery! You could get a pile of shit, or you could get a Rolls Royce. Which obviously a lot of people had a problem with. So he was constantly beefing with people like Rice Gum, H3H3, and even his own brother. It is not an understanding meant to suggest that people online hated him and his brother Logan, and after the Japan incident, they both had a serious stain on their reputation, despite Jake not even being involved in that whole situation. Only two months before Logan went to Japan, I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. Jake would announce his Team 10 house, where he and nine other influencers would all live in one of these content houses that had become quite popular at the time. Wow, I never thought I would say this, but welcome home, Jake Paulers. <laughs> we made it, mom. We flippin' made it. To me, this is when Jake would kind of reach his tipping point of being out of control. He was making millions of dollars every single month, and so he felt like he could do anything in the name of creating content. It was like he had no regard for the feelings of anyone else and was going to do literally whatever he wanted to do. This led many people into thinking that he was a sociopath. No, Disney no, Channel star Jake no. Paul is accused of making life miserable for his neighbors in fancy West Hollywood. The next thing you knew, he would seriously be at war with his brother Logan. His Team 10 house would absolutely fail with a lot of the members creating a negative buzz around his name, and he would start releasing some very questionable music. It's every day, bro, with the Disney Channel flow. 
slow. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. Soon his personal life would become very dark and lonely from the outside looking in. He had surrounded himself with yes men who were only interested in gaining clout. And it seemed like no one was really listening to his cries for help. I'm in four lawsuits and it consumes my life. What is Jake Paul right now? And like, where is this path? And like, I don't know what to do with my life. And if you guys out there want to be listening in the highest quality, you have to check out the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. When Raycon approached me with this partnership, I was excited because I had already been using their earbuds for around the last year. I use these earbuds almost every single day, whether I'm taking a walk, working out, traveling, or just doing daily work at my computer, Raycon is the best option for quality, sound, and comfort. They start at half the price of what you can expect from their competitors with the same great audio quality, and tons of features to control the way you listen. Whether it's the newest album, podcast, or audiobook, Raycon has been holding me down for quite some time, as their noise isolating feature helps me zone in on whatever I'm trying to focus on, and when I want to listen more casually, I use their awareness mode so I can pay attention to what's going on around me. Did I mention the earbuds have up to 8 hours of playtime for listening to audio and making calls? Plus, the charging case holds up to 32 hours of battery itself. Each pair comes with gel tips for that perfect in-ear fit. Personally, I've worked on these earbuds hundreds of times, gotten them very sweaty, and they've never fallen out of my ears, and have never malfunctioned like other earbuds I've used to work out. So if you're ready to buy something small with a big impact, Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash jamari to get 15% off your Raycon purchase today. So nearing the end of 2018, it really seemed like Jake had no idea what direction he wanted to pivot in terms of making content. He was now overtly trying to steer away from this kid-friendly audience and persona, and it was not working. Aren't you normally like a stepsister? Normally a stepsister or a stepdaughter. In short, it all seemed way too forced. Like when a kid goes through puberty and tries to play the edgy badass talking back to his parents. You know everyone needs that smack in the face sometimes to wake them up. His music career was pretty much an unsustainable joke, and overall his popularity was waning with many of his former fans now aging out of his content. It would take a boxing match with KSI's younger brother Deji and a Shane Dawson documentary to set his fate and put him on his new journey as a boxer. It was like it was perfect because he could make a lot of money, people wanted to see him lose, he could spend time outside of the spotlight, and he was always kind of a wild card, so fighting wasn't too far out of his element. From here, he would do his thing for the next year content-wise, but also keep training for his next influencer fight against Anis and Gibb in January of 2020, where he would show quite the chops by knocking him out in the very first round of the fight. And you have to keep in mind that Gibb was someone who had trained his entire life in boxing. So when Jake beat him so easily, his confidence for the sport skyrocketed, and he realized he had some good power behind his punch. To me, this is when he decides to go full force into the boxing lifestyle, and essentially give up any sort of YouTube gimmick that he still had going on. There's a huge lane for celebrities or whatever you want to call us to make a lot of fucking noise. So I, I want to be the best actual technical skilled influencer boxer because I see how big this is becoming. And in November of 2020, he would fight ex-NBA player Nate Robinson and absolutely flatline him with a brutal knockout. This is when the boxing community really started taking notice of Jake Paul's abilities for the good and the bad, and Jake started to realize he could make a lot of money doing this because there was an equal amount of, if not more people who wanted to see him get knocked out as who wanted to see him win. And when you have that situation with a boxer, that is really a recipe for high pay-per-view sales. And the main criticism after this match would be that he needed to fight a real boxer and not someone with no experience who was essentially rushing him like a bull. So then he would set up a fight with retired UFC fighter Ben Askren, who was completely out of shape. He would make very short work of him as well, 
bouncing his head off the canvas only two minutes into the fight. Now after this match, all the detractors said that Ben basically took a dive, and that he didn't train for one minute for this fight, and that he was essentially there to collect a bag and move on with his life. He was also never known for his striking ability, and only thrived in the UFC for so long because of his elite grappling. Jake would then search for his next opponent in the form of another retired UFC fighter, Tyron Woodley, who many considered a huge step up from the likes of Ben Askren or any retired basketball player. Yeah, I see him. Like, he got, he got a big booty. Like, that's part of the reason I wanted to fight him. Oh, he's thick. Like, he's super oh, thick. I wanted to grip them cheeks low-key when I first saw oh, them. Oh, see? Yes, Woodley was old and way past his fighting prime, but at least he was a UFC champion who was known for his elite striking abilities. Him and Woodley would take it all the way to the finish, and while Jake had a scary moment where the rope seemed to quite literally save his career, he would eventually win by decision. So we would see here the first fight where he had to go the distance and show some real boxing prowess. A mere four months later, the two would run it back after Tommy Fury backed out at the last minute. Like Tommy Fury, who's considered a professional boxer, gets sick, breaks a rib, and doesn't want to fight. I fought sick. I fought hurt. You got to go in there and get the job done. He would accomplish his greatest boxing feat yet by knocking Woodley out cold. From here, his confidence would skyrocket into the stratosphere as he started calling out everyone from Nate Diaz to Conor McGregor and even Canelo. Look at the year I just had. Unprecedented. One of the most valuable boxers in this sport. Four fights, four massive pay-per-views in 13 months. His name was on fire out here in these boxing streets. He was winning and making tens of millions of dollars every single time he fought and also pouring gasoline on the fire that he, his brother, and KSI created when they started this whole influencer boxing genre. For his next fight, Jake would settle on a very old Anderson Silva, with him once again winning by the way a decision. And still the main criticism against Jake was that he was only fighting people who weren't actually boxers and who were way outside of their prime. His answer to these claims would be to finally fight Tommy Fury in February. February of 2023, a fight that was supposed to occur for the last year, but kept getting delayed due to concerns from Fury's camp. With Tommy being four years younger and a bloodline professional boxer of one of the greatest of all time, this would be the true test for Jake Paul to see if he was actually ready to start fighting for real. He's gonna get knocked out by, by a Disney star. That's same, plain and simple, that's it. End of story, you'll see bro. In the end, Jake would talk a big game, but eventually get outclassed in the ring as Fury would work him for eight rounds straight, taking the decision. This to me is a world title fight. I trained so hard for this. This was my destiny. This was my fate. This left many onlookers wondering where Jake Paul would go from here. This is definitely a humbling experience. I'll take it on the chin, get back in the gym, and we can run it back because I think we put on an amazing show for the fans tonight. I just feel like until he actually gets knocked out in the ring, it's not really over. And I know boxing purists might hate him, but it is great entertainment, and he's given some legitimate boxers a great chance to be seen on his card. After the fight, he did continue his usual trolling antics, saying that he only lost because he had a wet dream the night before the fight. Stored in your legs, and it has something to do with like the neurological um, connection of like you did exactly what you were put on this earth to do. So you become like relieved, relaxed. Re relaxed, and oxytocin goes through your body. And you Either way, it will be interesting to see where he takes his career from here. I definitely think another match against Tommy Fury will be in the works. But y'all let me know what you guys think about Jake Paul and his boxing career. Do you think it will all come to an end very soon? Do you feel like me and think he actually has to get knocked out before this boxing thing is completely finished? As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like, and subscribing. Y'all make sure you check out the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. But as you guys know, it's been your boy the Tan Superman, and some other boxing influencers out here need to be covered. So I'm out. Peace!